When I was looking at residency programs, you know, there was a lot of things to consider for me. I personally am a person that succeeds in environments where I feel at home, but what really sets um, our program apart is we have several attendings in each field from different backgrounds, uh, different ways of doing things, so you get a wide exposure to that. And even to this day, you know, every day I learn something new in clinic. The people, I think, is what stood out to me on my interview, not just the residents, but also the attendings. You could really tell that they were friends and that they were joking, and, and, and it was really easy to talk to them and, and get along with them, and that really stood out to me on my interview. What's important in any residency program is the development of a culture, a culture that supports education, supports development, supports career uh, mentorship, if you will. And my role as chairman is to be a facilitator for all of those common ideals. We develop teams of faculty. For example, we have facial plastics and rhinology as a team. We have pediatrics as a team. We have otology and laryngology as a team. And then head and neck uh, oncology as a team. Residents are, are working with uh, the faculty in those teams for one to four months, depending on where you are in your residency. And then oftentimes within uh, that team environment, the residents are working one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member, whether it be in the OR or the clinic. Which is great because you're with the faculty members in their own faculty clinics, taking the same patients to the OR. And progressively, as you get to be a chief resident, you get more and more autonomy in actually managing their plan and doing more of their surgery. You know, as a rhinologist, we just don't do complicated sinus cases. We also do skull-based cases as well. Between myself and Dr. Lam, we do most of the uh, complicated skull-based tumors and cancers. So we work with our head, neck, and neurosurgery colleagues to take care of these patients. We're the tertiary referral center in the region for head and neck cancer. We cover all the subspecialties and there's a, a couple attendings in each subspecialty so residents get to learn multiple ways on how to do the same thing. We also spend some time with a private practice group in town and we do see a wide variety. I mean, here at Norf Centera Norfolk General, we see um, a lot of very specialized ENT care, for example, the complicated head and neck cancers. And we also see a lot of trauma as well, since um, there's unfortunately a lot of trauma in this area. <laughs> I think stuff that we get very confident in early on in our experience are uh, endocrine surgery, including thyroid and parathyroid surgeries, as well as laryngeal procedures, such as airway dilation, uh, esophageal dilation. I also think we get great experience in sinus surgery, and most of us are very confident in sinus surgery uh, early on in our uh, chief years. I would definitely recommend this program to anyone looking for an otolaryngology department. I think it sets you up well for really any career goals. I also really loved my time in Hampton Roads, uh, and there's no shortage of water to explore, uh, whether you like fishing or just spending time at the beach. It just really feels like a family here. And I think that's something really special and something that you want in these five long, hard, but also wonderful years that you grow. It's a small city that you know, has everything that you could want. I think the residents here are wonderful. We've somehow been able to keep a great culture here where everyone gets along. It's, um, everyone is extremely supportive of each other at work and in our personal lives. These are all people who are my friends who I hang out with you know, outside of work too. I really enjoy interacting with the residents in the operating room and in the clinic and with patients. Being able to teach them the skills that I know and also have them teach me and how I can be better on a daily basis. So that's really where my passion lies and why I get up in the morning and keep coming to work. Our pediatric division is uh, one of our most uh, significant experiences for the residents. It's their first opportunity during the residency program to be a chief. We work at the only freestanding children's hospital in the Commonwealth of Virginia. From our busy uh, pediatric ICU and neonatal ICU and emergency rooms, we have cases for the residents that are fellow level but uh, the residents get to do them. So all those cool, crazy cases that the fellow would be doing, you're doing. And so that's a really um, great opportunity to really work hand in hand with your attendings on you know, even the most complex of cases. And there's no opportunity that isn't afforded to you as a resident. Residents get great exposure to all the subspecialties. We have wonderful faculty. You get a lot of experience. Then when it's time for you to, to take a more active role in the surgery, your skills are really ready um, to kind of take off. So the research experience is quite robust. We have a great reputation of having residents actually funded by the Academy of Otolaryngology. 
through core grants, which are applied for during their second year. The projects that we have available at EVMS range from clinical projects that may be grant funded on the faculty level or bench projects that would translate to uh, future clinical applications. We have a large department here, three assistants that work with me, and we help to support all the faculty members, the residents, um, even medical students here to um, assist them and go through all the process of their research projects. Most students, most residents, most faculty want to perform research. It's the barriers to research that are uh, unfortunately established, whether that's getting IRB approval or getting your grant written. And so we've tried to take away a number of those barriers to success by having support individuals who do those administrative and clerical activities so that the residents and faculty can focus purely on the research. We really enjoy working here at EVMS. It's a wonderful place to be. The hospital system is extremely accommodating and extremely high quality for patient care. So it's very easy to come to work, be proud of the care that we're delivering, be proud of your colleague who you may be referring a patient to, know that they're the best person around, both to educate the residents and also to take care of the patients. And I think that that vibe is what makes the relationship between the residents and the faculty um, very healthy and collegial while also being appropriately professional. Many people don't realize that we are uh, the largest training program in the state of Virginia, both in terms of faculty as well as clinical volume. Uh, we have the largest volume of head and neck cancer uh, in the state of Virginia. We have the largest otology volume. We're the only freestanding pediatric tertiary care center in the state of Virginia. We now have a, a new mental health facility that's being developed that will support that. We've combined that with a robust research experience and an aggressive didactic experience for the residents. But more importantly, I think, is the relationship that we've developed between the residents and the faculty to allow an interchange of educational experiences that keep the faculty fresh, quite frankly, uh, that we always need to stay on our toes and be able to know that we're at the forefront of education and forefront of knowledge that we can impart to the residents.